I feel like I need to go ahead and share the word that I feel like the Lord gave me uh, to share today. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put on my cap. And I've got my orange shirt. And I see Miss Joyce Esco is all in her gear. Yep, and John and Susan. Y'all look good today. We're in the middle of our series, hashtag Go Vols. And if you're not a Tennessee fan, well, we're praying for you. That's right. Hey, last week we talked about the historical meaning of Tennessee Volunteers. Thousands of volunteers volunteered for the War of 1812, the Battle of New Orleans, the Texas Revolution. Remember the Alamo was the cry of the Texas Revolution because there were so many Tennessee volunteers who volunteered with Davy Crockett to go and fight to the death at the Alamo in San Antonio, Texas. And so the Tennessee volunteers were known for volunteering whenever somebody else needed someone to come to their aid, to come to their side, to fight their battles with them, the Tennessee volunteers were known for being ready to volunteer. And that's what we talked about last week. That's the way the church should be. The church is the only institution in the world that exists for people who are not its members. It's not about us. It's about others. It's about helping others. It's about reaching out to others. And so it's not about you and me. It's about the lost. And that's what Jesus came to do. Luke 19.10, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus was on a search and rescue mission. It was all about reaching the lost. It was all about reaching beyond the, the current circumstance where he was and reaching out to people who needed him. And that's where we got our mission statement from for Parkway, making disciples who make a difference. We want people to be healthy and whole in their relationship with God and be multiplying disciples. And so that's what we're talking about. But how, how can we do that in practical ways? How can we make disciples who make a difference? Well, that's where our vision statement comes in. Our vision statement says, if you take out your bulletin and look on the front, go ahead, you can take it out. What does it say? Connect, grow, thrive. Connect, grow, thrive. This is more than just a statement. This is what we believe. And it comes from Psalm chapter 1, verse 3, and that's right on the front of your bulletin as well. Why don't you read it with me? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. Yeah, we want everyone to be healthy and growing like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. But how do you get a full-grown tree that's bearing fruit? Well, it doesn't start out that way, does it? What does every tree start out as? A seed. A seed. So when we're talking about getting connected in the body of Christ, that should say, connect the seed. Connect the seed. So we have to get the seed connected, or else the seed will just sit up on the shelf and look pretty. You ever seen a, a peach seed? Or, you know, there's seeds look really weird, don't they? Walnuts, they, they look really weird, don't they? They look, they look strange. They're not meant for public consumption and seeing with the eye. They're meant to be placed underground. And that's where the seed becomes beautiful when it's in the ground 
and the ground is nourished by the rivers of the living water, and, it, and the seed is planted by the rivers of water. And so when the seed is in the right soil, when the seed is connected to the right soil, to the right situation, to the right circumstances, that seed will grow. Now let me just show you an example uh, that I found on the internet. And we know it's true because the internet says so, right? But this is a video that I found on the internet. And this is just a simple bean. And you've, you've heard of Jack and the Beanstalk? Well, watch as this bean sprouts and becomes almost a beanstalk. It's amazing when it's in the right soil, connected to what it needs, every seed will grow. Let's watch. So we see in just 25 days, that little bean became a beanstalk, didn't it? How did that happen? Well, number one, God. God is our creator, and he created beans too. <laughs> so that can only happen miraculously, but it happens all the time. But when that bean was placed in the proper soil with the proper amount of water, it sprouted and grew in a wonderful way. Did you know that we are all seeds, as it were? In fact, you may want to nudge your neighbor and say, hey there, seed. Yeah, we're all seeds. 
We all need to be planted, connected in the soil of the kingdom. We all need to be connected with the rivers of living water. But how many of us can find our way on our own? Well, I suspect when you talk to each and every person in this room that has come to know Christ, how did that happen? Someone else brought you to Christ. Now, there's the rare exception. There's the 5 or 10% that just come to know Christ all on their own. And that's happening miraculously in Muslim countries. They're having visions and dreams of Jesus. And Muslim people are coming to Christ in greater measure than ever before in all of history. Let's give God praise for that. But most people come to know Christ through someone else. Someone else has to make that connection for them. Someone else has to plant them, as it were, in the soil of the kingdom. So we are all seeds, and we are all part of the kingdom of God, and so we are healthy in our relationship with God when we're growing and thriving for the kingdom. When we're connected, we're growing, and we're thriving. So how do we... Connect others. Well, when we connect others, we connect them to God. We connect them to God. And we connect them to His presence. Maybe we bring them to a church service. Or maybe we bring them to one of our smaller groups. Hey, you know what? God can do more in someone's life in one second than we can do in a lifetime. Hey, all we need to get to help people get connected is to just bring them to God, to just bring them to His presence. Also, we connect them to His Word. Why? Because His Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. His Word is what shows us where to go, what to do, and provides the boundaries for us. And so we get people connected to His Word. How? By getting them in church here or, or part of a Sunday school class or a Bible study. And so we get people connected to His Word. But also we get people connected to His people. Why? Because no man is an island. Hey, none of us was designed... To go it alone. Amen? In fact, that was one of the first things that God said. It's not good for man to be alone. And I, I guess I could say that means more than just marriage. It's not good for anybody to be alone. We all need one another. And so when we get people connected, we also get them connected to God's people. Maybe in a, a Bible study or in a Sunday school class. Somewhere where they're not just looking at the back of somebody's head. No offense to anybody. You know, the view is not that great for some of us. But, you know, you need, you need more than just looking at the back of someone's head. You need to be part of a group or part of a sharing, part of, of sharing prayer requests and, and somebody who knows you and, and can ask, how are you today and really mean it? We need one another. We need to be connected in the kingdom. But not only do we need to connect, but we need to grow. And so when we get connected, that's Psalm 1 verse 3, planted by the rivers of water. But when we start to grow the tree, Psalm 1 3 says, He shall be like a tree. Now, you can't be like a tree without being like a tree. You can't be like a tree and still st stay a little seed. You've got to grow. Now, I'm not saying this badly, 
But growing in your relationship with Christ doesn't have anything to do with your physical, natural age. You can be 80 and still be wearing spiritual diapers. Uh Uh-oh, did I just say that out loud? You can be 70 and still be sucking on that baby bottle in the kingdom. Yeah, that's true. Hey, we all need to grow up in Christ. We all need to become mature in our relationships with God. And so that can only happen with time and being connected to God, being connected to God's people, being connected to the Word. And so we, here at Parkway, we desire to grow the tree. So how do we do that? Well, we, we keep them connected to, to God, of course. But we also want folks to become part of a group. And we also want people to become part of a team that serves in our church or in our community. Why do we want people to start to serve? Well, if people don't start to serve, they'll just sit and soak and sour. So if we don't start to serve... We'll start to sit and soak and sour. So we need to learn how to serve in order to grow in our relationship and become mature believers. So then when we become a tree, we're not just a seed anymore, but when we become a tree, but the process is not yet complete. The process is only complete when we bear fruit. And so we want to connect people. We want them to grow. But we also want them to thrive. We want them to thrive. We want them to bear fruit. We want them to thrive with fruit. A tree that brings forth its fruit. How do you like those oranges? Big orange. Go Vols. I'm sorry, I had to just throw that in. So, so how do we see people thrive? Well, we see people thrive in our own church body. You know, the people who are smiling and who are always ready to greet one another, the people who are thriving in the church, there are people who are always stepping up to the plate and saying, Hey, Pastor, what can I do to help? You know, people who are thriving in the church and they're also thriving in the community. I, I once knew uh, somebody, he's, he's gone on to be with the Lord now, but a person at our home church in Maryland, he used to take people out on his boat in the Chesapeake Bay and go fishing. And he would, he would take a number of people out, constantly taking people out fishing. Well, there was a method to his madness because once he got them out there on the boat in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay, he could start to witness to them and start sharing the love of God with them. And this one brother, his name was Wilbur, this one brother won more people to the Lord out on his boat than I think anybody else in the whole church did. Why was that? Because he was thriving in his community. He was reaching out to people who did not yet know Jesus, who did not yet know the Savior. And so he was thriving in the community. And so we want people to thrive And so it's when we're bearing fruit that we're thriving. So it's when we're multiplying that we're thriving. When we're making disciples who make a difference, that's when we're thriving. When we are investing in other people who can carry this on after we're gone, we're thriving. So our mission statement, making disciples who make a difference, how do we do that? 
connect, grow, thrive. Connect, grow, thrive. John 15, verse 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. He didn't say, I appointed you and chose you to sit on a pew. He didn't say, I chose you and appointed you to get Holy Ghost goosebumps every Sunday. He said, I, did, I chose you and appointed you. He didn't say for you to be blessed every Sunday. He said, I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. So the only way we can actualize the calling on our lives is if we go and bear fruit. John 15, 5. We'll close after this one. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But let me hasten to add, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It's through that power that comes from the vine. We are the branches. And the, the vine is full of that Holy Ghost sap. And so the vine is always pouring out that Holy Spirit sap into our lives. And so that Holy Spirit empowerment and enable, enablement enables us and empowers us to bear fruit. But apart from Him, we can do nothing. So, are you part of the team this morning? Let me just, let me just urge you. Let's make this practical. We're not going to have an altar call this morning. The altar call is going to be others. Others that need to get connected. Others that need to grow. Others that need to thrive. Who are you pouring yourself into? That will take your place whenever you're gone. Can we do something just together? Can we hold up our five fingers? Okay. Can we name five people? Just five. Can we name five people that we feel like God is calling us to? To go and help them get connected. To go and to help them grow. To go and to help them thrive. To go and bear fruit. Can we, just mentally, can we name five people that we are actively reaching out to? Okay, let me change that a little bit. Can we name five people that we should be reaching out to? They can be family. They can be friends. They can be acquaintances. They can be somebody that we haven't really met yet, but we've noticed them and we've paid attention to them and we've kind of been, you know, you know what I'm talking about, kind of drawn to them, but we've not made that a connection yet family friends acquaintances people we don't even know but people that god is calling us to all right maybe that's a little bit too too much for some of us can we name one person 
one person that we are reaching out to with the love of God? Can we, can we name one person? One person that we're, we're not spending time thinking about ourselves or doing for ourselves, but one person that we're reaching out to beyond ourselves. One person that we're reaching out to with the love of God. One person that we're reaching out to with the kindness and mercy and grace of God. One person that we're helping. One person. One person. Can you think of one person? Can we hold up one finger representing our one person? Now let's stand. And let's keep up our finger. Can you allow God's Spirit to grip your heart with a burden for others? You know, sometimes we make it real complicated. But sometimes we need to just have simple childlike faith. And this may sound a little silly. But I'm going to sing a little children's song. Maybe you know it. Maybe you can sing it with me. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Come on, sing it again. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Amen. Amen. So we are the connection, connection point. We are all seeds, but there are many, many people around us who haven't yet gotten connected to the kingdom soil. Let's be someone who helps people to connect, to grow, and thrive in their relationship with God. God bless you. I love you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Shalom.